enterprise computing typically deals with computing in which there's a mainframe computer involved. Across the Fortune 500, across multiple industries, finance, banking, insurance, certainly in healthcare, and public sector, and distribution, and it certainly takes place on a global basis in the Americas, in Europe, in Asia. And they use IT to help the company uh, achieve its strategic objectives. What level of importance does enterprise computing play at IBM? We get about 80% of our revenue from about 20% of our customers. So think about that for a minute. Now, enterprise computing takes place in that 20% of the customer set that drives 80% of our revenue. It's critically important to IBM, but it's even more important to our customers because it generates value for their firms. The mainframe you can think of as the foundation to the house in enterprise computing. Without a mainframe, you don't have the availability, you don't have the security, you don't have the resiliency required for these large corporations. When you're looking to hire somebody for an enterprise computing job, what are the skills that you're looking for for, say, an entry-level position? What's critically important are that people not only have computer skills such as COBOL training and Java programming and systems administration, but people that are interested in going into enterprise computing really need to understand the underlying business processes that take place in a firm. For example, if you think of an insurance company, they all process claims. So things like claims adjudication and explanation of benefits and policy administration, these are the business processes that ultimately enterprise computing is going to automate. If a CS student asked you, why should I study enterprise computing instead of a different type of computing, what would you say to them? I would say don't make the classic mistake of thinking that the world is going to be run by an Intel processor, an AMD processor. It's really important that you don't ignore the mainframe computer. And I'll tell you from personal experience, I've talked to a lot of people even who are 10 to 15 years into their IT career. Some of these people who have no mainframe skills. And I recommended that they try and take an assignment in their company where they spend a few months working in the, in the mainframe compute environment. And when they do, across the board, 100% of them have come back to me and said, you know, Bob, I really didn't understand or appreciate the significance of mainframe computing. And now that I have some mainframe skills, I think I can really strengthen my resume. Frankly, I might be more valuable to my firm. I might be able to get a raise, or I might seek other employment opportunities outside my firm where these mainframe skills are valued. What separates enterprise computing people from other IT professionals? Someone that's involved in distributed computing is more focused on a departmental uh, or small group of users. It's an application which supports an individual department in a firm or a small group of users, whereas an enterprise class application typically supports an entire firm. If I go back to the insurance company example, the claims adjudication or claims processing applications, they run on a mainframe. There are thousands of people sitting on headsets in insurance companies processing claims every day. That's all typed into mainframe computers. It supports the entire enterprise, whereas distributed computing might be something like word processing. It might be something like a series of analytical programs that support uh, the uh, small department within the insurance firm, maybe a finance department. So typically enterprise means the entire firm whereas distributed typically refers to small art departments within a firm. Did you know the flight simulator for the space shuttle runs on an IBM system Z mainframe? I didn't know that. So we all know that we're in a recession right now, and I was actually watching a program the other day about recession-proof jobs, and three IT jobs came up. There was networking, software engineering, and mainframe computing. Do you think that's true? Enterprise computing is critically important to firms, and large companies, for the rest of our life at least, will clearly have mainframes and will need trained mainframe employees. If I look at a distribution firm like Walmart's, for example, their warehousing, their inventory systems, they have to run on mainframes because mainframes are the only computers that are big enough 
to handle the workload. The Walmarts of the world, the travelers insurance companies of the world, they're going to continue to have to run these applications. Their business volumes might shrink in response to lesser demand because of a weaker economy, but those applications are going to continue to have to run on a mainframe. So consequently, mainframe computing, software programming, where we write and modify these applications, and networking, which is the link or the cloud between the person calling in their insurance claim and the back-end claims adjudication system, those are areas that will continue to be growth areas going forward. They are virtually recession-proof, and when times get better, and they will, the bad times always get better, there will be even more employment opportunities going forward. Now, what would you say to those people who are saying that IT jobs are being offshored? There's no question that uh, enterprise computing jobs are being offshored. They're being offshored to places like India and northern China, and a lot of that has to do with a pure labor arbitrage. You could afford to buy two to three times the number of people. So for every one person you hire in New York City, you could have three people that you would hire in Mumbai. However, what's happening now is that companies are finding out that the cost differential is decreasing. Uh, what's happening are these firms in India are raising their prices and the cost savings in moving that workload offshore while it still exists aren't as great. The other thing that's happening are customers are becoming more sophisticated and they're realizing that there are other costs involved in offshoring work. I mean, project management, for a large part, has to remain here in the U.S. All the jobs aren't offshoring. I think the, uh, the concern that the majority of the jobs are moving to these lower-cost countries probably is an overstatement of reality. Projecting five years into the future, what would you say is the outlook for enterprise computing jobs? Well, if um, the mainframe computer continues to grow, uh, at the rates we think it will, which is about 30% per year, uh, means basically every three years will essentially double the number of uh, mainframe MIPS or computers that are out there. We're going to need people to run this equipment. Uh, even though there will be increases in the amount of automation and systems management and you won't need as many people per computer, given the increase in the number of mainframe computers and the number of MIPS that are out there in the marketplace, you will incrementally need more employees. I know when I look at companies like Walmart and Travelers and Aetna, when I look at the U.S. government, when I look at some of the banks around the world, uh, their expectations are continued growth. I mean, for example, I just returned from China and I was uh, meeting with Bank of China. Bank of China has over 350 million customers. That's more customers than there are people that live in the United States. These large institutions have plans to become global enterprises. As they become global enterprises, they are going to be more dependent on mainframe computing. The amount of information they process is going to increase dramatically, and as such, that all spells enterprise class computing. Enterprise class computing growth spells jobs. There are going to be jobs in these firms going forward. Did you know 65% of all internet data is stored on mainframes? I didn't know that. I keep hearing that people in the enterprise computing field will be retiring within the next few years. What is IBM doing with colleges and universities to ensure that there are enough people to fill this critical field? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, we uh, started investing the IBM Corporation uh, in partnerships with colleges and universities around the world. Today, there are over 500 colleges and universities around the world that offer mainframe computing courses. Clearly Marist is one of them. Uh, Marist, for those of you that are listening and may not be aware, in Poughkeepsie is right near uh, where IBM manufactures the mainframe. So there's a very strong and very long relationship between IBM and Marist. But there are other colleges, almost 500 of them around the world, that are also offering mainframe courses. And what's really important to understand is where we have these types of programs, there is a strong linkage between the college, university, and the local hiring companies. For example, there's an agreement that for all of the graduates of the mainframe computing courses at the University of Arkansas, Walmart will strongly consider the possibility of hiring them. I know with Marist located in Poughkeepsie, there is a strong uh, opportunity for the Marist graduates in computer science to work in New York City, financial industry,
to work in uh, Hartford in the insurance industry uh, and to work uh, across the country and outside of the U.S. So there's tremendous opportunity. We, IBM, are making investments in colleges like Marist and University of Arkansas trying to grow the strength of these programs. And uh, if I were a student today in a college majoring in IT, I'd strongly consider the possibility of going into mainframe or enterprise class computing. What can the enterprise computing community do to help IBM? And what can you do to help the ECC? What I'm trying to do, what we need more people to do, is to share this information so that people, the smart people that are listening to interviews like this, can factor it into their total assessment as to where might they want to invest and work their careers. I think that colleges and universities like Marist need to continue to remind their students of these opportunities by, by having them view interviews like this and talking to people from industry. And I think it all comes down to awareness and making fact-based decisions. President Obama, if he's really going to create jobs going forward, I think he needs to focus in on information technology. You know, we all read in the New York Times or whatever newspaper we read that he's a big fan of Blackberries. Where do you think Blackberries are connected to? Enterprise class computers that serve this information. If you consider taking a summer intern job, and oh, by the way, there are summer intern jobs available in IBM, I think you'll be put in the environment. And once you're in the environment, you'll actually see it, you'll feel it, you'll work within it. I think then you'll become a true believer of the growth opportunities in this area. Marist College will be hosting a national ECC conference this June. What are the specific areas uh, that you would like to have addressed at this conference? About 50,000 students have come through and completed mainframe computing classes at various colleges and universities. And our initial projections are over the next 10 years, perhaps another 500,000 to 750,000 students will come through these courses. It may not be enough. There are other steps that are going to have to be taken. What I see as a huge growth area for colleges like Marist are now to tap into existing companies and to take people that are midway into their careers to come back to colleges and universities to enhance their skills. What I'm talking about is the value of continuing education. And I see a huge growth area for colleges and universities to be one of advertising to people who've already graduated from college to come back for a six-month or 12-month series of courses to enhance their skills. So I really appreciate the opportunity to have had this short discussion with you. Uh, I firmly believe that enterprise class computing is a growth area, and I do think for those of you who are studying it, you've made great decisions, and those of you who are considering it, I'd strongly urge you to get more information so that you can make the best career choices going forward.